Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, are you planning to break into cybersecurity this year and land your very first cybersecurity job? If you are, then two of the easiest ways to get into cybersecurity is either through incident response as a stock analyst or as a cloud security engineer. But which position is right for you? So in this video, I'm gonna break down the pros and cons of both of these positions and give you like my advice on which position is suitable for you. Stock positions are usually very easy to break into, but the long-term prospects might not be there or and they are very high pressure jobs. Cloud security positions, they, are, they might be better in the long term, but they are more difficult to break into. So I want to give you my pros and cons of both of these positions and which is like suitable for you. If you're new to this channel, my name is Tamarish Lal. I'm a senior security consultant for AWS. And on this channel, I, I talk about cybersecurity careers, cloud security, AI. So if you're new, please do like and subscribe to this channel and let's get started. So uh, what am I talking about now? Like I said, cloud security engineer versus a uh, SOC analyst. This is one of the most common questions that I get asked. Like, should I uh, go into cloud security or should I go into like uh, incident response as an L1 SOC analyst? And I want to give you my personal opinion on which position suits which type of role. So we have these two cloud security and L1 SOC. Both of them are excellent like uh, positions and both of them give you a good entry point within like the massive field of cybersecurity. It's about getting yourself in, right? Especially if you're just starting out within cybersecurity. And again, like I always give a disclaimer before my videos that this is my personal subjective opinion. You're free to agree or disagree with it. But this is based on what I know and what I have seen in my 20 plus years of experience within cybersecurity. So let's take a look. First of all, let's understand both of these roles, right? Let's take a step back and fully understand what we are talking about here. So a SOC analyst role. As a SOC analyst role, L1 SOC analyst, and I'm specifically talking about, we're talking about somebody who is at the, like, the very front lines of incident response, right? Your job is mostly to monitor SIM dashboards, uh, investigating alerts and threats which are generated from the security solutions, right? Fine tuning these alerts, performing that initial triage and escalation, finding out if this is a false positive, or is this uh, alert really like an incident that needs to be investigated and then documenting those incidents, creating reports for the SOC manager, for the CISO, for the head of incident response. It's a very exciting job to be in. I've like looked after like multiple SOCs in my career and I, I know just how high pressure and rewarding the work can be, especially if you're starting out. This is one of the most exciting careers to be in as a SOC analyst, like as an L1 SOC analyst. Okay. Uh, cloud security engineer. Now, a cloud security engineer, here you're designing secure cloud architectures. You're implementing native cloud native security controls. So if you're on AWS, things like Security Hub, Guard Duty, or maybe you're implementing like a cloud security posture management solution like Wiz, you are enforcing infrastructure as code security controls, right? Making sure that the uh, infrastructure as code which is deploying the cloud resources, those are secure, those are being scanned. You are responding to cloud-based incidents, you're putting in automations, and there is a lot of heavy collaboration with teams like DevOps, team like cloud operations. So all of these things, they are there. This is, I'm like a cloud security consultant. I'm not a cloud security engineer because I'm not starting out, but a lot of these things, I'm, I do co coordinate with cloud security engineers. And again, this is a very exciting job to be in. Cloud security is very, very hot right now potential is there for automation and doing all sorts of exciting things, right? So uh, let's get started now. Now that you have an understanding of what these positions do, let's first talk about the entry level difficulty, how hard it is to break into these positions if you're just applying for them, right? So the stock analyst, it's easier to get into without any doubt. It's much easier to land a job uh, as a L1 stock analyst with basic certifications. Most companies, they, they want an L1 stock analyst and they can quickly upskill them to respond to incidents, right? There are many, many boot camps and online resources. Just go to YouTube, uh, like Google, like a SOC, uh, a SOC course or a SOC boot camp. You'll find many, many resources. And honestly, you can get that foundational skills uh, if you're working in as an Elven SOC and that can lead to you getting more like uh, specializing in incident response, maybe threat hunting, red teaming, all those sort of things you can do. So it's much more easier to break into as a SOC analyst compared to cloud security. But what are the cons? The cons is it can get repetitive. It's very exciting when you start out six months, one year. I, I cannot tell you how many times in my career an L1 SOC analyst has come to me after they started after one year, year and a half, and they're saying, I'm like, we're really burnt out. I'm, I'm fed up of 
just responding to alerts all the time. Some people like it. Most people do get burned out. Alert fatigue and burnout are very, very common in L1 SOC analysts. And of course, you have those 24-7 shifts, right? Most SOCs, they sometimes work in eight-hour shifts. So your timings may not be suitable. Again, when you're starting out, it's easier. But then as slowly your responsibilities, maybe you get married, <laughs> you get older and all that, it does become a bit more difficult uh, to manage. So I want you to keep this in mind. It's much more easier, but these are the pros which are there when it comes to a L1 SOC analyst. What, let's talk about cloud security. A cloud security is a slightly more advanced. I'm not saying it's completely difficult to get into, but usually companies do want some specialized skills and you get a better salary if you're starting out as a cloud security engineer because they want to see that do you know AWS? Do you have any hands-on skills? I have many videos on my channel about building up those skills, right? Because they want to know can you do automation, but your job is much more varied. It's not like the L1 SOC analyst where you're just sitting there responding to alerts for eight hours, okay, and you get that alert fatigue. There's a much more variety like I, sh like I showed you, right? You have to deploy the cloud native controls, infrastructure as code, automation, all those sort of things. But the cons is usually companies do want a higher level of experience, right? They want to know do you have hands-on experience, do you know DevOps, and a, a bit more technical knowledge is required at the outset. So it makes it the entry level slightly more difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible. If you do your hard work and you do your homework, it won't, it's not impossible, but just to give you, like uh, I want to be completely 100% transparent with you. Okay, one thing I want to add. Now we talked about the entry level. As AI is getting more and more like advanced every passing day, I do want to talk about things like how vulnerable is this job to AI in automation? Because I want to be honest with you, if I tell you to go with a job and then I think that job can get obsolete within six months, right? So let's talk about the vulnerability to AI in automation with SOC analysts, especially L1 SOC analysts, right? You have a moderate to high risk of it getting automated. AI agents are getting very, like upskilling very, very fast and they're getting more and more intelligent with each passing day. So the like the L1 SOC analyst, that is the most vulnerable to automation and AI in the coming years. Okay, and the entry level SOC roles may shrink over time because it is entirely possible that the L1 SOC role, it might go to AI agents, agentic AI, right? Additionally, you have the security orchestration, automation and response platforms. They can do that initial level alert triaging, uh, giving the context to those alerts and even that initial responses, right? They, what, remember anything that is repetitive, it can get automated by AI. It's very easy to do that. So. If you are starting out, you just remember that you have to keep yourself upskill into things like threat hunting, purple teaming, incident response, things where a more human level of intellect is required, right? So remember that so your vulnerability to automation and AI being replaced by AI is at a more high level risk. With cloud security engineer, the, the risk is there, but it's much more lower. Why? Because it does require a human insight into things like strategic implementation of secure cloud environments. You need to know how this control will get applied to each environment. Uh, you need things like secure architecture, threat modeling, custom engineering. It's my, I'm not saying it's impossible. It is considerably more and more harder to automate. And as companies are migrating to the cloud, as companies are implementing AI, nobody implements, I mean, most companies do not implement AI on-prem simply because the cost is too high and the storage and the processing power is too high, right? So most companies want to go to the cloud. So as AI becomes more popular, cloud security also becomes more popular because most of these workloads will be running in the cloud only. So what are the long-term career prospects for each of them, right? So uh, my opinion is as a SOC analyst is a great starting point. If you're completely a fresher and you get a SOC analyst job, absolutely go for it. But your long-term success depends on evolving beyond that L1 SOC analyst. Please do not think yourself as a SOC analyst for the next three to five years. You need to upskill, okay? You will get yourself replaced by automation if you do not do that. So the best long-term strategy, in my opinion, is use the SOC as a launch pad to move into things like offensive security, cloud, or advanced incident response where human beings like oversight is required, right? So you have to keep this thing in mind. And that is just, that is my opinion to you if, if for an L1 SOC analyst as a long-term career prospect. With a cloud security engineer, the high de there's a higher demand and more like long-term career prospects are much more better there. It is one of the most future-proof cybersecurity domains. Why? Like I said, because of the AI effect. As more and more AI gets uh, implemented, the cloud will become more and more, more popular. So the best long-term strategy is 
get hands on, get your cloud security certifications, try to get experience of more than one cloud provider. If you have AWS, do a little bit of Azure also, right? Or if you have Azure, do AWS, Google Cloud, and get as much hands on as you possibly can. Like I said, I have many, many videos on how you can do that. So this is the long-term prospects I would recommend. So which is right for you? Like I said, I try to be as objective as possible for each of the roles, which one is suited for you. So choose stock analysts if you like fast-paced reactive environments, right? Environments where yeah, you like being under pressure and you, you thrive under pressure. You like investigating threats and alerts, solving problems, right? And you're comfortable working shifts or handling pressure. People, like I said, if you're starting out, if you're old like me in your 40s, <laughs> L1 stock analysts might not be the best job for you, right? And you want to quickly get a, like a head start in cybersecurity. Many companies manage service providers. They're always looking for L1 stock analysts and the bar for entry is much lower. So definitely go for it, right? Choose the cloud security engineer. If you are slight, maybe you're more older and you have a little bit of experience and you prefer project-based architectural work, right? You want to get hands-on. You enjoy designing systems, threat modeling, solving complex technical problems, right? Or you have an interest in cloud platforms and DevOps and you want to work like more proactively rather than sitting there and just waiting for an alert to come so you can respond. You want to quickly respond to it and you're much more proactive in this regard. Then definitely a cloud security engineer position will be much more suitable for you. So I hope this gave you a good idea on which position like suits which person. Like I said, it, it does depend. Use the advice and the tips I've given to make your own decision. Every person is different, but uh, I hope I've helped you out here to make that decision which is there. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.